got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Um, some of the past interviews you can check out, founder of P90X, founder of RX Bar, founder of Atari. They talk about not just the ups, but the downs and the journey. Um, this interview is a little bit different. This is, was for the Process Breakdown podcast that I did. It was so good that I had to release it on Inspired Insider, so stay tuned. Um, and before you get to it, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. What we do is at Rise25, we help B2B businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 partnerships and clients, and we help you run your podcast so it generates ROI. And the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at a way to give to my best relationships, a podcast for me over, over the past 10 years has allowed me to profile others thought leadership in companies and give to them and have them on my podcast and platform. So if you have questions about podcasting, go to rise25.com. You can watch a video. My business partner and I banter like an old married couple. Check out rise25.com. Thanks. Listen to the episode. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, host of the Process Breakdown Podcast, where we talk about streamlining and scaling operations of your company, getting rid of bottlenecks and giving your staff everything they need to be successful at their job. Uh, past guests include David Allen of Getting Things Done, Joseph Grenny of Vital Smarts, who wrote Crucial Conversations. Uh, today's guest, um, I'm super excited to introduce Michael Gerber. I'm going to introduce you in a second. Before that, a short sponsor message. This episode is brought to you by Sweet Process. And here's the thing, uh, Michael, if you've had team members ask you the same questions over and over and over again, the 10th time that you've spent explaining it, there is a better way. There's an actual solution. One of them is obviously by the EMF <laughs> and join Radically You. The other that you could put in place in your business is Sweet Process, which is a software that makes it drop dead easy to train and onboard new staff and save time with existing staff. And, you know, I was talking to Owen, who's the founder, and not only do universities, banks, hospitals, and software companies use it, but he told me that first responder government agencies use it in life and death situations to run their operations. So you can use Sweet Process to document all the repetitive tasks they eat up your precious time so you can focus on growing your team and empowering them. And you can sign up for a 14-day trial, no credit card required, sweetprocess.com. It's sweet like candy, S-W-E-E-T, process.com. You know, I am super excited to introduce today's guest. Um, he's, Inc. Magazine calls him the world's number one small business guru. He is an entrepreneurial and small business thought leader who has impacted the lives of millions and millions of small business owners and hundreds of thousands of companies over 40 years, even though he looks young. <laughs> Michael E. Gerber, if you didn't know what I was talking about, you should, uh, is the author of the New York Times mega bestseller for two consecutive decades, The E-Myth Revisited, nine other worldwide bestselling E-Myth books concerning small business and entrepreneurship, leadership and management, and his mission and I mean, I guess you'd, Michael, you'd never say it's accomplished, but it's pretty darn good to transform the state of small businesses worldwide. You know, thank you for joining me, Michael. I'm delighted. Thanks, Jeremy. You know, there's so many questions, and the one that stands out, which you answer in many books, um, but I'm going to ask it anyways, is, and people are always asking their, themselves this question, is why do most small businesses fail? Well, they fail because they don't know what they're doing. Because they didn't read the e-myth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they simply don't know what they're doing. They started for the wrong reason. They started to get rid of the boss. So most small businesses are a product of dissatisfaction, not a product of um, excitement, not a product of creation, not a product of imagination, but a product of dissatisfaction. I hate working for this guy. I hate working for that guy. Mm. I hate working somebody else's gig and on and on and on. I want to do it myself. I want to get off on my own et cetera, and so forth. So they're born out of dissatisfaction, and they simply then go to do what they know how to do in the business of their own, and it's just terribly not enough. And not only isn't it enough, it's wrong, because it's exactly the opposite of the way a new company needs to begin. So that's why 
You know, you talk about in the book roles. Okay. And I love, you know, everyone should check out E-Myth. Um, I read it decades ago and I continue to read it at least once a year. And because it reminds me of, am I playing the role that I want to be playing at that time? So talk about some of the roles. Well, there are many, many, many roles. Um, we all play many, many roles. Um, there was a great master of the psychological by the name of Gurdjieff. And Gurdjieff talked about I. And he talked about all the little eyes. I, 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 I. But he essentially said there is no big I. But we all believe we're talking about the big I when we talk about this I and this I. And each of those I's are I do this, I do this, I do this, I am that, I am that, etc. and so forth. So there is no I at the heart of all this. The question then becomes, if there were, what would it be? Now, I don't want to get people immersed in psychology and philosophy and mysticism and spirituality and any of the things that I could get everybody um, involved in, because they're all critical questions. But if there were an I, what would that I be? That I would be the creator, the imagineer, as Walt Disney called him, Disney Imagineering, the imagineer, the creator, the inventor. And that I is indeed the entrepreneur. And so where an entrepreneur is absent from a company, um, the most essential character of that combined collective work is missing. There's no heart to the matter. The heart of every small business is a technician suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. Hmm. They created a company to get rid of the boss and they became the boss and they're working for a lunatic. Now I repeat <laughs> this over and over and over and over again. So people who've heard me, well, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. But hear me, you didn't really hear it. Because if you heard it, everything would have changed. So the roles in a company are simply the technician, the manager, the entrepreneur. The technician is the doer, the manager is the controller, and the entrepreneur is the leader. The doer, the controller, the leader. Absent those three roles, and I mean each and every one of those three roles, functionally within every component part of that small company, the company is rootless and boundless. There is no there there. There is no place we're going. There is no nature about who we are and what we do and why we do it. And all of the language that everybody, the why of it, the what of it, the how of it, the where of it, the when of it, et cetera, and so forth. All of that has to be addressed. The supreme role of that is the creator. It's been said, Jeremy, we're born in the image of God. You've heard that. Yeah. We're born in the image of God. Well, if we're born in the image of God, then we're born to create. And if we're born to create, then the only question left is to create what? Well, a world fit for God. But we're never taught that. We're never taught that. Our primary role as human beings is to create. And to create a world fit for God, to create a world that works in a harmonious, spiritually conducive, propelling, absolutely fascinating manner, purely under the word good. And so we're here to do good. And pretty much we do everything but good. <laughs> if you find yourself, you know, if someone finds themselves in the technician role, okay, and they realize that, I would suspect most people don't realize that and they keep doing the same thing over and over. If they realize that, what are some of the steps they should 
do if they want to break out of that and grow a bigger company? Let's assume they're not satisfied with where their company's at and, and where they're at. Well, you're, you're talking about an owner of a small business. Yes. Finds himself or herself in the technician role. You understand? They know they are in the technician role. They elected that role. Yes, they're the owner. But you understand the owner of a small business, after all the thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of small business owners we've worked with over the years, you understand they don't think of themselves as a small business owner. They think of themselves as a carpenter, as a framer, as a photographer, as a massage therapist. Whatever they do, that's how they think of the business they've got. The only difference is now they're doing it for themselves. So in short, they got rid of the boss, they opened their own door so they can take home all the money and they began to do the work of, a, I'm calling a technician. They call it whatever they call it. I'm an attorney, I'm a psychologist, I'm a teacher, I'm whatever it might be, whatever the work is, I'm a chiropractor. They don't say I'm a technician, they say I'm a chiropractor. But of course I'm a chiropractor, that's why I started my own chiropractic practice to be a chiropractor when i say to the chiropractor yes but you're doing a dumb job of it they look at me and they become insulted i'm a great chiropractor <laughs> but everything else is falling apart yeah but i don't have time for that i want to hire other people to do that but then you've got to become a manager. But understand, if you become a manager, the manager needs an entrepreneur, a leader. Because the manager isn't the leader. The manager is the controller. And on and on and on. And the story just is so eloquently, brilliantly, cohesively, congruently, understandable but the only reason somebody has difficulty understanding it is because they're so resistant to understanding it and it's that resistance jeremy you asked me what is the why do small businesses fail it's that resistance that accounts for the 550 some odd thousand of small businesses that shut their doors down last year understand there was no virus then it was just a repeat of the year before and the year before and the year before and the year before it's tragic it's absolutely tragic and so there's something that has to be done about that but it's not done on the outside of the owner it's not by giving them a system it's not going to be giving them a, a a tool it's not by giving them a whatever her whatever it might be that everybody says buy this do this buy this do this this is going to make all the difference it's none of that it has to happen on the inside of the founder of the business owner of the hope to become entrepreneur and that inside really comprises the four very clear and distinct personalities of an entrepreneur. And I define those as the dreamer, the thinker, the storyteller, and the leader. The dreamer has a dream, the thinker has a vision, the storyteller has a purpose, and the leader has a mission. I have a dream, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream when he spoke to that, the thousands of people in Washington, D.C., to tell them about his dream. Tell them about the dream, Martin. Tell them about the dream, Martin, his people said. You gotta have a dream. Steve Jobs said, I have a dream. Oprah Winfrey said, I have a dream. Walt Disney said, I have a dream. Bill Gates said, I have a dream. Every extraordinary entrepreneur who's ever done anything extraordinary said, I have a dream, I have a dream. And then they would describe what their dream is. And their dream was to transform the state of something, and not just here, not just there, but everywhere. 
Michael, what have been your favorite stories over the year? You have a bunch in the e-myth um, of these roles and how people have maybe broken out of, um, like you said, if you get these right, it can be boundless, right? What are some of your favorite stories over the years of, of businesses? Well, they're, they're legion. And <laughs> Jeremy, I hear from people who, um, who've read my books um, there are now close to 30 books that I've written and published. A great many of them are what we call vertical emit books, like the emit chiropractor, the emit attorney, the emit da 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 da. Yeah, yeah. If someone can go to just uh, for the notes, Michael E Gerber Companies dot com, and there is a link. You can check out all their stuff. Also, the emit library shows you these verticals. Yeah, and yeah. you gotta understand, it's really, really important, Jeremy, and thank you for, for saying that and doing that and sending them there. Uh, but they've gotta understand, we're not here to sell them something. So I don't have a product to sell them. I have a paradigm to inspire them. Mm -hmm. And that paradigm has worked over 43 years of just massively focused scrutiny to literally realize our dream, our vision, our purpose, and our mission, the dream to transform the state of small business worldwide, the vision to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting services, the purpose that every single small business owner who's called to our paradigm can be as successful as a McDonald's franchisee, and our mission to invent the business development system that stands at the heart of the most successful small companies on the planet. Companies like 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Companies like Infusionsoft. Companies like um, BNI. Um, masterful companies, each of whom have applied my logic, our paradigm, as they went to work on their companies, their very, very small companies, to transcend their very, very small companies, to become just massive leaders in their industries. I'm saying everybody can do that. So every story that we have are about people who have done that. Like Clayt Mask at Infusionsoft. Like Brian um, Scudamore at 1-800-GOT-CHUNK and so forth. And so all you need to do is you look at those companies, you'd say to yourself, well, how in the world could a guy picking up junk create a worldwide phenomenon, a half a billion dollar a year enterprise, picking up junk? He read a book, The E-Myth Revisited, and then he did it. Hear me, he read it and he did it. A great story. Our co-author of the E-Myth HVAC Contractor. It's one of our most recent books. Ken Goodrich. Ken Goodrich went, worked for his dad from the age of 10 holding the flashlight while his dad would install an air conditioner. And um, Ken went on to college to get a respectable career. And while he was going to college to get his respectable career, um, he worked part-time fixing air conditioners. When it came time to graduate from college, the banks came to recruit young talent. And Ken asked, so what does that job pay? And the banker told him, and he, Ken laughed, he said, I make twice that working part-time fixing air conditioners. So Ken realized he spent all that time going to college for nothing. He went back and his dad took over his dad's business. And Ken said in 18 months, he destroyed it. Hmm. His dad taught him how to hold the flashlight. His dad taught him how to fix an air conditioner. His dad taught him how to be a technician, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Ken was great at that. His dad didn't tell him about the money, didn't tell him about the taxes. 
He didn't tell them about the IRS who came and shut him down. Hmm. The only thing he had left, Ken says, is a book he found in his father's top drawer. And it was the E-Myth Revisited. He took the book home with him and he read it. And then he read it a second time. And then he read it a third time. And then he went to his mother to apologize for destroying her retirement and told her that in three years, he was gonna apply the E-Myth Revisited and he was going to sell the company for a million dollars. Well, he did that. Hmm. But instead of a million, he sold it for three. And Ken said to himself, wow, that was cool. And he did that 24 more times. Hear me. He went to work back on a new business and built it and sold it. And build it and sold it, build it and sold it. Today, that process is up to 200 million in annual revenue. All because he read the E-Myth Revisited 39 times and did it and did it and did it and did it. Hear me. This is not philosophy. This is pragmatics of the most brilliant kind. There's a way McDonald's became so successful to become the most successful small business in the world. McDonald's, the hamburger place. He built the prototype, perfected the prototype in Des Plaines, Illinois, and then replicated it a second time and fixed what didn't work. And then replicated what was fixed the third time and fixed what didn't work and by the time he got to the fourth time, Ray Kroc, he had the absolutely perfect, perfectly replicable system that he could grow to the 37,000 McDonald's hamburger stands all over the world. It's math. It's simple. But it requires dedication. And it requires will. So, Jeremy, we love to say to small business owners who are struggling, doing it, doing it, doing it, the smallest of the small, we don't move up to the mid-market and so forth because the small doesn't have any money. We don't move up to uh, the more expensive and more profitable uh, arenas. We've never done that. We never will do that. We're focused on the smallest of the small. It's where we've made our mark. It's where our dream comes alive. It's where we can truly transform the state of economic development worldwide. We've never been seduced to go anywhere else. The magic that you see when you actually see somebody read a book and do the book they read chapter by chapter by chapter and sustain their passion for it and the story they're there to tell ain't nothing like a Jeremy. Mm. It's just absolutely staggering. Thank you for sharing that. That's pretty amazing. Um, Michael, what, what's been the most popular vertical book? I know you have optometry, attorney, accountant, chiropractor. What's been the most popular out of, out of them so far? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Oh, I'm curious. I, I, I wanted I, to see. I could, I, could give you, I could give you a quick and dirty answer, but it wouldn't be right because I haven't even checked. The, I'm just curious. Like if you take the accountant, for example. How did you meet, and it looks like the co-author is, is Darren Root. How did that come about? Um, in every single vertical book, every single co-author came to me because they'd seen a vertical book. And they came to me and they said, I want to be the one for their particular vertical. And so all we'd say is, well, tell us your story. And they would tell us the story. And by the time we got done with the conversation, they either were going to be or they weren't. So we've never gone out to mm -hmm. find vertical co-authors. They find us. What was it about the accountant one, if you remember that story? 
that compelled you to want to about do the that attorney work? one uh accountant or attorney i'm sorry i didn't hear well the accountant or attorney whichever one you think well the attorney was interesting um because one of the partners are two guys in a law firm their own firm and one of them took the book with him to from Los Angeles to San Francisco on his way to a, an assignment. And he started reading the book in the plane. He's telling me this story. And he lands at the airport, San Francisco airport, and immediately goes to a phone and he calls his partner. He said, get this book, read this book, because when I'm done, and I'll be back down in three days. We have to sit down because we're gonna do this book. And it was the E-Myth Revisited, of course. And his partner did, and he did sit down, and they began to do the book. They invited me to speak at one of their conferences. And at the end of my speech, um, they came over to thank me, congratulate me, et cetera, and so forth. And they said, so Gerber, what's next? And I said, you're never going to believe it. He said, what? I said, we're about to publish our first vertical book. And it happens to be the Emith Physician, which actually followed the Emith Contractor. I don't know if you've seen this book, but... This was the first one. Mm. And um, this was, as you see, a teeny book. There was no co-author. We we're just testing the market to see whether the thought I had was true that an attorney doesn't think of themselves as a small business owner. They're an attorney. Uh, a contractor doesn't think of himself as a small business owner, thinks of himself as a framer, as a whatever. Right. And so we tested the first one, and then I had a ghost write the second one. That was the Emith physician. And what he essentially did, he copied the first one and just changed it from contractor to... <laughs> they just changed the cover. That's what I was going to say. Can you just change the cover? It's the same methodology. <laughs> Please, it's the same thing. So we're challenging ourselves to test how the market will respond to it. Anyway, I said, we're going to have our first co-author. He said, who's your co-author? I said, we haven't selected him yet. He said, I'm it, the attorney. I said, well, not so fast. And then we <laughs> began the conversation. Right. He wrote the check and we got started. So that's how the attorney got published and it was published by Harper. And it went on from there. Yeah. There are 312 books to be done. To be done. 312 books, 312 vertical markets. Every single one of those books, I'm the generalist and the co-author is the specialist. So I read a chapter and then the co-author writes a chapter. I read a chapter on marketing, the co-author writes his chapter on marketing. I read a chapter on money. He writes a chapter on money, et cetera, and so forth. And so it's the generalist and the specialist, the generalist and the specialist. Hmm. Every single one of my chapters, Jeremy, are exactly the same. In every one of the books, we now have 19 vertical books. The 19th is about to be published. Every one of my chapters are identically the same. As so you think, people would say, but they don't understand. The reader I'm is different. different. Right, exactly. The reader, reader is different. So an attorney is reading the legal book, an accountant is reading the accountant book, a chiropractor is reading the... He doesn't read the accountant book. He doesn't read the legal book. You understand? He only gets my point of view once. So why would I change it? I wouldn't. <laughs> of course I wouldn't. Well, you you know, there's there's foundational principles and recipes that don't need to change necessarily. So you got it. Yeah. That's critical what you just said. 
That's critical. We don't live like that. We don't live like there are substantive, absolutely crucial perspectives that live forever. And so when people speak about the even saying that's an old book, that's an old book. Look at all the new books. Look at all the new books. And essentially what they're missing, the point is all those new books are simply attempting to create something different out of those old books that covered the heart of the matter in a way that those new books never will. So they're so fundamental to the process that we call now the Eightfold Path. A dream, a vision, a purpose, a mission, a job, a practice, a business, an enterprise. A dream, a vision, a purpose, a mission, a job, a practice, a business, an enterprise. The Eightfold Path, the evolution of an enterprise from a company of one to a company of 1,000. And anybody within the sound of my voice got to understand that process, that process, that rigorous process can build any kind of company on the planet doing any kind of work on the planet in exactly the way the one preceding it did in some other completely different market, in some other completely different product, service, whatever it might be. And the minute you get that, and it's so difficult for people to get that, especially because everybody is saying it's got to be unique, it's got to be unique, it's got to be original, it's got to be They want a shiny object, something that's new and exciting. It's, it's, Even though it may be based off the fundamental truths of, uh, you know, they stand on the shoulders of the people before them. Yeah. So there you go. So that's the story of the vertical books. And the vertical books are going to turn into the vertical market, which essentially means we'll be rolling out that business development system to every vertical market on the planet. Love it. I was hoping you just changed the cover of all of them. You don't even need the spe- <laughs> specialist. <laughs> well, it's um, embarrassing in a way. <laughs> um, They're all, they all look the same. They're different colors. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I, you mentioned something just, it's just now with the eightfold and that was, that's in my notes. Definitely go over about your manifesto. Okay. Um, and how you came up with that. And you mentioned the dream, the vision, the purpose, and the mission. And step one is the dream. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about finding your dream? But of course, um, and it's really much simpler than anybody would wish to make it. It's what I'm most compelled to do. Years ago, 1977, when my then partner, Tom, and I sat down and started, opened the doors to the Michael Thomas Corporation. I was Michael, he was Tom. A business development firm. It was the very first small business coaching company in the world. When we started that company, we took time to ask the question, so what is it we're here to do? Tom is just one of the most brilliant men I've ever met. And um, I'm the most imaginative. So we're sitting there dueling, if you will, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we did that for over almost three months to come to the conclusion of what we were there to do. And the conclusion was, we've said it, to transform the state of small business worldwide. Well, what does that mean? That means to enable every small business owner who's called to our message to be as successful as the most successful small businesses on the planet. And in the process of doing that, we would literally transform the state of small business worldwide. You wouldn't have small businesses failing, 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 because they would be built on a methodology that effectively makes it impossible for them to fail unless they fail to have the discipline 
and the will needed to see it through. Because obviously it does require discipline and will. So the dream in substance is the great result. So we ask a small, so what's the great result you wish to produce? And they start to, well, I want to make enough money to, well, I want to do this. No, that's a personal dream. We're not talking about a personal dream. We're talking about an impersonal dream. By impersonal, I don't mean subjective, I mean objectively. If you could say at the end of your life, I did this, what would this be? Despite the fact that you don't have the ability to do this, despite the fact that you have no idea how to do this, despite the fact that you probably never even thought of doing this before, what would it be? We're just sitting here, a couple of guys talking. If you could do it mm -hmm. through some magic, what would it be? So I said, but I'm not going to leave you there trying to figure it out. I'm going to share mine with you. And then we'll just take that and let's put your words in it. So mine was to transform the state of small business worldwide. So you're going to say, Jeremy, to transform the state of blank worldwide. And Jerry might say, oh, no, I don't want to do worldwide. I just want to do Poughkeepsie. <laughs> I say, yeah, I got it, Jeremy. But understand, if you learn how to do this in Poughkeepsie, you can do this in Saratoga. You learn how to do this in Saratoga, you can learn how to do this in San Mateo. You learn how to do this in San Mateo, you can do this anywhere, anywhere in the world. That's what Ray Kroc did. That's what everybody can do. Everybody can do. So what would it be? And then the conversation begins. You know what I love about that, Michael, is while you're going through that process of dreaming, you are counter, trying to counteract people's self-limiting beliefs, right? By saying, okay, if you could wave a wand, because you've already experienced this probably hundreds of thousands, of millions of times of people putting up objections to this, right? So I love that part, and I don't know if people caught that, but they're just, you're in the process, you're helping them overcome self limiting beliefs. Well, overcome limitations, perceived yeah. limitations. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, but I couldn't do that. Yeah, but I don't want that. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. It's constant. It's constant. If there's anything that happens in the world, it's yeah, but. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. I've been hearing yeah, but. That's your next book. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> so the dream. The second is the vision, creating the vision. So it has to happen in the real world. So um, we had a statement. We were going to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting. So if that's good enough for me, because it's the world's number one small business, then it's good enough for everybody. So it becomes, I'm going to invent the McDonald's of poodle clipping. I'm going to invent the McDonald's of, um, of relationships. I'm going to create the McDonald's of marriage counseling. I'm going to create the McDonald's of the McDonald's of the McDonald's of the Why not? Because McDonald's gives you a pattern to utilize in order to fill it with what you intend to do. So it just shows up. And of course, the, the value of that, it gives everybody something to lean on. They don't have to come up with their own words. They simply have to stick in the word that matters. In our case, it was small business consulting. In his case, it was parenting. In her case, it was marriage. And it, you follow me, whatever it is, whatever yeah. floats their boat. Right. So now you have the dream, the vision, now knowing your purpose. Your purpose. So if our purpose is to transform the state of small business worldwide, if our dream rather is to transform the state of small business worldwide, our vision is to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting. Our purpose then 
is to make it possible for every small business owner who's called to us to apply that logic to the development of their company, their life, and to achieve a level of success unheard of, unparalleled in the small business community. That's our purpose. And our mission is to invent the system upon which all this is to work. And that system is lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. Lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. The franchise prototype. And we're essentially saying that every company on the planet must be designed, built, launched, and grown as though it's going to franchise. Because whether they're going to franchise it or not, it's absolutely indelibly clear that it must be an operating system that they can depend upon. Because to the degree they fail to create an operating system they can depend upon in the hands of ordinary people to produce extraordinary results, and hear me, we've done that countless, countless, countless times. To the degree they fail to do that, Jeremy, they fail to create a business that works. To the degree they fail to create a business that works, it's just doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, and finally they just run out of gas, they run out of money, they run out of time, they run out of energy, and they run out of love. You get burned out. Yeah, they just get burned out. And part of this, Michael, is you have a program, Radical You. And I wonder if you could talk about, you know, there's different ways that people can engage with you and your company. You know, they can get the e-myth, they can get one of the verticals. Another one is Radical You. And I wonder if you could just talk about some of the components of Radical You and, the, and again, the methodology of Radical You. Well, fine. Radical You is a school. It's the only school of its kind on the planet literally, not virtually. It's the only school of its kind on the planet. It's a five-year school. So hear me, you could enter that school where you're going to high school in your freshman year, your sophomore year, your junior year, and your senior year. And while you're doing that, you would be going to work on your business, your company of one, and growing it to a company of 1,000. Literally, step by step, by step, by step. You could be returning from the military and do identically the same thing. Now understand when I say five years, people say five years, I don't have five years, I don't have five years, I don't have five years. I mean, it's such a stupid reaction. I don't have five years. <laughs> what do they expect to build a company of 1,000 in a month, in a minute, in two weeks? What? Of course it's gonna take time. So year one, we call the dreaming room. And in year one, they first study the core elements that are absolutely critical if you're going to create a company to grow it. And that's the first 12 weeks of the first year. The first 12 sessions, weekly sessions, that give you homework each week and they're video sessions. Amethyst Rosenauer provides those. She's so much cuter than I am. <laughs> provides that content. And then the student simply goes and does the work. Week after week after week. In the first year, there are 52 sessions like that. 52 weekly sessions. And during that time, you get to study how to create a dream, how to create a vision, how to create a purpose, and how to create a mission. How to discover your dream, how to discover your purpose, how to discover your vision, how to discover your mission. That's what happens in year one. Year one is the foundation. Year one provides the place 
You're going to set your feet on, your imagination on, your heart on, your will on, your determination on. And then you go to year two. What's year two? Year two we call the job. And the job is your client fulfillment system. Call it your product. Call it your service. And again, 52 weeks. Session one, session two, session three. Se and we provide every student with exactly what they need to do, learn, in, 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 inspire, acquire, etc., to design, build, launch, and grow their client fulfillment system. That's the product they're going to sell. The third year now, now get this, a dream, a vision, a purpose, a mission, a client fulfillment system. The third year is the practice. And the practice is lead generation, lead conversion, plus the client fulfillment system you created in year two. And that's your franchise prototype. Get it? Now we're going to go to work on your franchise prototype. You understand this is not just theoretical. This is not just academic. Everything we're doing here is being done on the street. They're actually designing, building, launching, and growing a company of one. Their company of one. But they're doing it in the way that will absolutely predictably assure them it will work because they're testing it, verifying it, validating it step by step by step by step and getting stronger inside every step of the way. Now they're ready for the fourth year. And the fourth year is the business. Now get this, what's a business? A business is nothing other than up to seven turnkey practices. So let's go back to the chiropractor. Got to practice. Lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. Lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. That's what a practice is. That's what his practice must do. Now we're going to replicate that practice seven times. We now have business plus a turnkey management system. So suddenly we're in business. But you're hearing me, we've tested it and validated and proven it every single step of the way and gotten deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in our ability to tell the story of who we are and what we do and why we do it and what difference it's going to make in the world. I have a dream. I have a vision. I have a purpose. I have a mission. That's what every single one of our students are going to be able to learn how to say and learn how to do. And finally, in year five, it's the enterprise. What's an enterprise? An enterprise is nothing other than up to seven turnkey businesses, which is what? 49 turnkey practices, plus a management system, plus a leadership system. So we're saying every human being on the street is a company of one. Every single human being living in the world is an economy of one. Now we're going to transform that economy of one into an economy of many. And we're going to suddenly transform the state of economic development worldwide because this isn't madness, this isn't silly, this isn't stupid, this is absolutely replicable, as replicable as a Starbucks is, as replicable as name it. It's proven itself, proven itself, proven itself, proven itself, and every human being can do it. Every human being can do it. If they've got the will, we've got the way. Thanks for sharing that methodology, Michael. And there's a mission behind the mission um, that we were talking before we hit record about um, even with the, the charities behind this. So could you talk about that for a second? Well, yeah, I'm going to be 84 on June 20th this year. No spring chicken, as they say. 84 years young. I gotcha. Yeah. My wife and I, Luz Delia, Luz Delia who's the 
president and chief executive officer of Michael E. Gerber Companies, have made a commitment to literally transform the state of economic development worldwide. Not sort of, not maybe, not hopefully, but literally. And to spur that forward, we've made the commitment to provide the first year of Radical U to every single human being that comes to us with a $10 bill in hand. One thin $10 bill and you're in for a year. And not only are you in for a year, week one, week two, week three, week four, all the way through week 52, but I'm gonna personally, in fact this evening, at six o'clock California time, I'm gonna be personally be speaking with all of our new students to inspire them to understand why the will and the way are so critical to what we're setting out to do. You don't become a US Navy SEAL by wanting to. You become a US Navy SEAL by doing the work. And the work is absolutely critical, fundamental to creating a great result in the world. We know what that work is. We've mastered that work. We have taught more people how to do that work than any other organization on the planet. And now we're gonna give that away to people who say, Michael, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. I'm with you, I'm with you. Help us do this, help us do this. And we will do exactly that for one very narrow, very slender $10 bill one time. And the rest of the year is on us. And you were mentioning some of the charities. Also. Oh, yes. Well, any profit that comes from the $10. Our intent is to have a million students over this first year. Any profit that comes from the $10 is being given to charities. And those charities are unemployed mothers. Those charities are returning veterans who don't know what to do. Those chatteries are charities are um, folks who are just left out in the cold with this virus and are completely unprepared for it. So every single dollar left out of the 10 is going to be donated to one charity or another. And all of that's in the works. Yeah. Michael, first of all, I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone should check out michaelegerbercompanies.com. Check out everything they have going on from the books to Radical U. Michael, are there any other places we should point people towards online or anywhere else or any other resources? Or should they just go to michaelegerbercompanies.com? Well, they can go to michaelegerbercompanies.com. You can email me directly, Michael E. Gerber, Michael rather, at michaelegerber.com. You can go to radicalu.com, radicalu.com, and you'll find out more about that. And um, yeah, just do that and you're in. And we'll get you enrolled in Radical U and we'll begin to kick ass together, <laughs> every single one of us. Amen. Michael, thanks for all the work you do and have done over the years. Um, really appreciate it, everyone. Check it out. Thanks again. Thank you, Jeremy. Take care. Bye-bye. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.